the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning. Let us ask the Lord for forgiveness. You raise the dead to life in your spirit, Lord have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of your Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, in the abundance of your kindness, you surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you. Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the book of the prophet Jonah. This is the word of the Lord that came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and preach against it. Their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah made ready to flee to Tarshish, away from the Lord. He went down to Joppa, found a ship going to Tarshish, paid the fare, and went aboard to journey with them to Tarshish, away from the Lord. The Lord, however, hurled a violent wind upon the sea, and in the furious tempest that arose, the ship was on the point of breaking up. Then the mariners became frightened, and each one cried to his God. To lighten the ship for themselves, they threw its cargo into the sea. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone down into the hold of the ship and lay there fast asleep. The captain came to him and said, What are you doing asleep? Rise up, call upon your God. Perhaps God will be mindful of us so that we may not perish. Then they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots to find out on whose account we have met with this misfortune. So they cast lots and thus singled out Jonah. Tell us, they said, what is your business? Where do you come from? What is your country? And to what people do you belong? And Jonah answered them, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Now the men were seized with the great fear and said to him, How could you do such a thing? They knew that he was fleeing from the Lord because he had told them. They asked, what shall we do with you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more turbulent. Jonah said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea that it may quiet down for you, since I know it is because of me that this violent storm has come upon us. Still the men rode hard to regain the land, but they could not, for the sea grew even more turbulent. Then they cried to the Lord, We beseech you, O Lord, let us not perish for taking this man's life. Do not charge us with shedding innocent blood, for you, Lord, have done as you saw fit. Then they took Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the seas raging abated. Struck with great fear of the Lord, the men offered sacrifice and made vows to him. But the Lord sent a large fish that swallowed Jonah, and Jonah remained in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. From the belly of the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God. Then the Lord commanded the fish to spew Jonah upon the shore. The word of the Lord. 
You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. Out of my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the midst of the netherworld, I cried for help, and you heard my voice. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea, and the flood enveloped me. All your breakers and your billows passed over me. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. Then I said, I am banished from your sight, yet would I again look upon your holy temple. You will rescue my life from the pit, O Lord. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. My prayer reached you in your holy temple. You will rescue me from the pit, O Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Hallelujah. hallelujah. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up and to, and to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus replied, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going by that road but when he saw the man, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds, and bandaged them. Then he lifted him on his own animal and took him to an end and cared for him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instructions. Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robbers? The robber's victim. He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. And Jesus said, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. So the uh, very familiar parable of the Good Samaritan, very, it's unique to Luke. And the message in the challenge is to have the eyes of compassion. The priest and the Levite, the good guys, the really good guys, priests are good guys. They saw the man, and they walked by the opposite side. They went actually out of their way to get away from the man. They probably were going to the temple, and somehow they had touched his blood. They would be ritually impure and able to worship. But nonetheless, they ignored this man in his need. And up comes a Samaritan, the absolute scum of the earth, to a Jew, he had the eyes of compassion and cared for the man. When we have the eyes of compassion, because we all know what it is to suffer, when we have the eyes of compassion, the barriers of our prejudices begin to break down. In this circumstance, it should have been the Samaritan that passed by the opposite side of the road. But it was the Samaritan who had the eyes of compassion and cared for the man, 
even though they were bitter enemies in their culture and in their religion. So today, I think the challenge for us is simply to have the eyes of compassion. Because when we can come to understand the suffering and the plight of another human being, then our differences begin to melt. We can see a suffering soul like ourselves and reach out in compassion. And God knows we live in a world where violence continues to escalate. And people, because of their differences, their prejudices by way of skin or language or country or culture or religion, seem to be becoming more ingrained and resulting in violence and war. It has to start with all of us to have, like the Good Samaritan, the eyes of compassion. At this Eucharist, we celebrate God's eyes of compassion for all of us in sending his son to give his life, that we might be free from the wounds and the, sin, and the, the wounds of our sins and the death they bring. Today, may we pray for the compassion of God and the Samaritan. Let us stand and bring our prayers to the mercy of our God. For Pope Francis and all bishops, may God continue to give them the strength and courage necessary to preach the truth of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government officials across the world, may they be blessed with God's wisdom in their daily work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those weighed down by any burden, may the Lord grant them strength and comfort in their time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community as we gather in prayer before the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may God's love and mercy surround them and bring them to his everlasting kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Deacon Joseph Welch, for whom this Mass is offered, for, what, for whom do we pray today? Hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Seeking the intercession of Our Lady for peace, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. And we pray all these things through Christ our Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Lord, accept the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through these saving mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. Though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, we know that it is by testing us that you change our hearts and prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak again to each other, adversaries join hands, and people seek the way of peace. By the working of your power, it comes about, Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. So with all the choirs of angels and saints, may our voices be one in grateful praise as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy. The highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless you through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, at whose command we fulfill these sacred mysteries. For when he was about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at table. He himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing into his hands and confessing your mercy, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. And so, Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously endow us with his very spirit, the spirit that takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace. May he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, 
along with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us all to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. For it is through him, with him, in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look then not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. Have a good day, everyone.